Hello and welcome to the Capitola Planning Commission meeting. This meeting is open to the public with in-person attendance in the City of Capitola Ch Council Chambers. Thank you. Uh, located at 420 Capitola Avenue and can be watched remotely. Please note that public comment is available for in-person speakers only. Planning Commission and staff are attending in person or, and some remotely. Uh, there are several ways for the public to watch the meeting remotely. Information on how to watch the meeting via Zoom is available on our website, cityofcapitola.org, on the Planning Commission and also on the Planning Commission meeting agenda. Uh, the public can also live stream the meeting on the city's website or on YouTube. As always, this meeting is cablecast live on Spectrum Communications, Cable TV Channel 8, and AT&T UVerse Channel 99, and is being recorded to be rebroadcast on the following Mondays and Fridays at 1 p.m. on Spectrum Channel 71 and Spectrum Channel 25. A recording of the meeting will also be available on the city's website after the meeting. Our technician tonight is Walter, and as a reminder, please turn off your cell phones during the meeting. Thank you. So now we will have a roll call. Commissioner Esty. Here. Commissioner Jensen. Here. Commissioner Wilk. Here. Vice Chair Christensen and Chair Westman. Here. Uh, now we will stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. So now we are going to move on to um, oral communications. And first, are there any additions or deletions to our agenda tonight? There are no additions or deletions to the agenda this evening. All right. Thank you. Uh, now we're going to move on to um, public comment. Uh, this is short comments from the public concerning matters not on the agenda. All speakers are requested to print their name on the sign-in sheet located at the podium so their name can accurately be recorded in the minutes. Members of the public may speak up to three minutes unless otherwise specified by the chair. Individuals may not speak more than once during oral communications. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Goran Klopich. I live here locally in San Luis County. Two days ago, I made a call around 8.02 a.m. in the morning by Knob Hill area uh, on Hill Street here in Capitola, uh, where there is a fitness club. I found some methamphetamine on the floor there uh, across Knob Hill. What was appalling to me is when I made this call, the officer who, who replied to uh, to the call, did not uh, seem to understand my English very well, but I'm a little bit educated. I went to college and university here in the United States, so I don't think that it's a problem to understand what I was talking about. I'm a firm believer in Captain Sarah Ryan. I consider her uh, my close friend, so that's all I wanted to say uh, about it. Uh, it's uh, it's really getting complicated here in Capitola. Uh, Unfortunately, unfortunately, because I think I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm, it's just me, but I'm finding stuff uh, around the businesses and it's not good that it's happening. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you for reporting it. Uh, is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak during public comment? Uh, seeing no one will close the public comment period and move to commissioner comments. Anyone have any tonight? Yeah, I just uh, I just like to thank staff and particularly Brian uh, Froelich who uh, who helped me this week. I had a bunch of questions that were required a little extra research, and he was he jumped on it and gave me uh, a 
good answer. Some of it not even on the agenda. So I appreciate your efforts, and I'd like to publicly acknowledge that, that you allayed all my concerns. Thank you very much. Sounds like Brian did a great job if he allayed all your concerns. <laughs> <laughs> um, staff comments? None. Uh, no comments this evening. Okay. Uh, so item number three is the approval of the minutes uh, for November 2nd. 2023. Um, does anybody have any corrections or additions or would like to make a motion? I move approval of the minutes. A second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, I think we can do an uh, oral vote on this one. Uh, everyone in favor? Aye. Aye. It passes unanimously. Uh, so now we're to the consent calendar, which we need to break into two parts. Uh, because several of the planning commissioners need to recuse themselves because we live cl too close to this project or work for a firm that's financially involved with the project. So uh, we'll handle item A separately, and um, that's to approve our meeting schedule uh, for 2024. I think we just need a motion and a second. Move approval of uh, consent calendar item 4A. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. I think we can do a voice vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So um, now I am going to turn the meeting over to Commissioner Esty um, because uh, Commissioner Wilt. We need to recuse ourselves on this side. So before you leave, um, we're going to move forward with the rule of necessity because we need at least three planning commissioners to vote on this item. And tonight, um, we're going to exclude um, Commissioner Christensen from this process, but I will check in with our city attorney before the next hearing to make sure uh, whether or not you should participate in the rule of necessity as you work for the applicant. Or, yeah, the so um, state law prohibit, I'm going to read a statement about this and explain it. So state law prohibits public officials from acting on matters in which they have certain economic interests. Three, plan, or three planning commissioners have disclosed disqualifying conflicts of interest in decision relating to public hearing item 4B. Without these conflicted members, there is no quorum. Tonight we'll be, have two planning commissioners uh, go through the rule of necessity. Under the rule of necessity, a public official may participate in a decision to the extent the participation is legally required. Here, the participation of two conflicted commissioners is legally required in order to achieve, or one, sorry, one conflicted commissioner is legally required in order to achieve a quorum and enable the commission to act on this item. Therefore, the commission may invoke the rule of necessity to bring back one commissioner as is necessary to have a quorum. The commissioner who will be brought back will be randomly selected by drawing the straws. The commissioner that randomly selects the shortest straw is the commissioner. Oh, so we're going to draw the straws. So I, I have a question. Does this apply for the next meeting as well? So we're going to apply this for this evening's meeting. Then I'm checking. I'm going to check in with our city attorney. Um, but I don't want to have Commissioner Christensen participate because she works for the applicant tonight. But if, if we're doing that incorrectly, we will have the, we'll do the correct poll next meeting. If it is correct that we should have excluded Courtney, then whomever polls tonight will be uh, the commissioner that participates at the next hearing, unless otherwise directed by legal. <laughs> okay, so the commissioner that randomly selects the shortest straw will be the one who may participate in the decision. Exciting. I can feel around it. I know. Theoretically, but I All right. I think my got it. All right, so I have my straw back. Yeah, 
Nice job, Paul. <laughs> yeah, nice job. Thanks. Uh, so now we have item B, um, which is uh, 417 Capitol Avenue. And the action that's being taken tonight is to continue this item to our next meeting. A lot to go through to continue an item. So can we have a motion to continue? I'll move that we continue item 4B. Second. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second, and we can do a vote. Um, aye. 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 Okay. So it unanimously carries here at noon. All right. Uh, moving on, we are now at our public hearing section. Uh, the first public hearing is going to be 200 Monterey Avenue, number two. Uh, it's a conditional use permit application for beer and wine sales at an existing restaurant, uh, Mijo's Taqueria, located in the MUV uh, zoning district. And can we have a staff report? Yeah, thank you for the intro and good evening, Chair Westman and Commissioners. I've got a brief slideshow here for the Mijos item. Um, this is proposed at 200 Monterey Avenue in tenant space number two. Uh, there are four tenant spaces in this building. It's in the mixed use village zone and specifically the proposal is a conditional use permit to sell beer and wine. A little background on the property and this tenant space is that uh, both of which are, have been long established restaurant uses. Uh, there are city records that go back into the early 90s and even some into the 1980s showing that restaurants have been continuously uh, established at this property. And so the restaurant use and the parking are considered legal nonconforming. Uh, Mijo's uh, established seven years ago in 2016, having taken over for what was actually previously also a taqueria under different ownership. And that taqueria had a type 41 license. So uh, in that way, this would be a reestablishment of that use. Um, the concept within the tenant space itself is to have a display fridge and or a kegerator behind the point of sale. Uh, this would be for indoor consumption as Mijos does not have uh, any outdoor patios or dining spaces. And then the hours uh, that Mijos posts on their, our website is uh, actually a little bit more narrow than the hours here, but uh, staff is recommending a condition of approval that the hours um, be consistent with the outdoor dining program within the village. And so this would be uh, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, looking at the floor plan, uh, just over 800 square feet is the total tenant space. Uh, we've got the, we use the pointer, the front door and the point of sale and the hatched area here behind the point of sale counter would be where the fridge and or kegerator would go. Take a look at a photo here. And so that menu behind the point of sale uh, over to the, the sliding rack there uh, will get a little bit reorganized with some new equipment um, to serve this proposed use. Um, just a bit of additional info on the analysis that goes into our review. Planning department contacts the police department to verify uh, that there are no concerns or calls for service to any specific property proposing to um, modify or establish a CUP associated with alcohol service. Uh, we also contact ABC, uh, who is, uh, waits for our final approval before issuing uh, the license. In this case, it would be a Type 41 license. A uh, little bit more of info for you about just village ABC licenses. So currently, there are 23 of them. Uh, it's, it's, my table is a little small to, to see. So the summary on the, the right-hand side, I'll run through. So 23 total. 12 of which are, are beer and wine related. Seven are actually um, can pour distilled spirits. Three are retail and tasting focused and one is the, the hotel, which is hospitality. So this would add one to the, the beer and wine category. 
and just a, a run through of some of the conditions that are being recommended. So on site consumption, uh, limited to inside the tenant space. We have a recommendation for signage to the exits uh, to notify customers containers are limited to within the building. Uh, no outdoor or in flood sound. All storage associated with the use would need to be inside the building and a restroom would need to be available to customers. So that's the summary and conclusion of my slideshow. We're recommending approval with those conditions and the findings. Happy to take questions. Do we have any questions for the staff before we open the public hearing? I had a question. I had a question um, for staff. Is was the previous um, owner that had the beer and wine license, the Type Forty One, was that not transferable? Uh, I, it could have been transferable. Um, we do have the owner here. Okay. Probably fill in why that curious. wasn't transferred, but that would have been an option at that time. But. Okay. Wondering. Just a question on <clears throat> sorry on on site consumption. So, um, they would sell if it was an alcohol beverage, it would then be opened for consumption on site. It wouldn't be sold like sealed. Yeah, the, I think the intent is for consumption on site. A, a Type 41 license um, it does have an ability for a sale to go uh, for with a sealed container. Yeah, okay. I, it's just, I just didn't understand the exact number. Okay. Um, we will now open the public hearing. Um, I believe the applicant is here to speak with us. Hi, I'm Anthony Guajardo. Thank you for your consideration. And I'm just here to answer any questions that anybody may have. So um, is it your intention uh, when someone calls in and does a takeout order that they can purchase a, a beer? I can see that they could purchase those containers of beer and take it with their order. Uh, wine, it would have to be a whole bottle of wine. Um, the anticipation is for anything on site. Um, I'd have to look further into the Type 41 license with ABC and what I know during COVID they had some regulations that they now changed back to not allowing takeout. But uh, the it's more of an added amenity, not something that we're looking to promote as much as uh, a drinking establishment. I'm not adding any TVs. We've been there seven years. We haven't had a beer and wine license. So kind of this establishing this is added amenity, but it's not something that's going to make or break our business. Mm -hmm. So it's just something customers have asked for, but not looking to uh, turn this into a, a bar or late night establishment, keeping the hours the same where we right now we close at seven o'clock, summertime eight. So. Thank you. Uh, anybody else have any other? Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else here in the public who would like to address us? Uh, seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the um, commission for discussion. So I had a couple of concerns. One was something we discussed a long time ago when we opened. We, talk, we were talking about British ales opening mm -hmm. up on Capitola. It's like, well, did was there any concern about the number of establishments that serve beer and wine in the village, or did we want to start considering the zones and keep out zones, whatever? At the time, a slightly different configuration of the um, planning commission said, no, <laughs> no, we don't want to go down that path. This is, you know, people are, it's under control and we can just continue it until there's a problem. And then my other concern was, because it's right next door to an ice cream establishment, is there a problem with the mixing of the, you know, so close to uh, where children are? And then, but we have a precedent on that because we did the same thing in the mercantile next to the arcade where we allowed the pizza and the beer. And so Brian was kind enough to go back to the police department and see if that, if that was a problem. Were there any complaints or was that, and the answer was no. I mean, the, they have a very good working establishment with the police department. The police department has a very good established working establishment with the owners in the community and it's just not a problem. So having said all that, I have no problem with this application. Just out of curiosity, how would you zone to differentiate alcohol free zones and well, you could, for example, say alcohol free, alcohol only on Esplanade, and then as you get away from it, I'm not suggesting that. I'm just saying that. Did anybody want to explore that? And the answer was no. So 
And I do think that there are cities that have regulations that say that there can be no conversion of, you know, retail space to uh, restaurants or uh, alcohol serving things. I think there, there are ways if the city decided that they wanted to restrict it. And at some point, I, I think it, it may become an issue. For me, it may be become an issue in the village because, um, you know, you don't want every, we, we want to have a healthy mix of businesses down there. And um, personally, I would not, not like to see it turn into just restaurants and that kind of thing. But as far as Mijos is concerned, you know, I, I think they're there. They've been there for a long time. Uh, I have I have no problem with their particular application of any of that. So, would anybody else want to make a comment or make a motion? Or I have a comment, and then sure. I'd like to make a motion. <laughs> um, I have a kind of an alternate view on what Commissioner Wilk and Commissioner Wilkes Westman were saying. Is that I feel like there's, there is a very good mix, and prohibiting one restaurant. And this is just general comment. But prohibiting one restaurant from having beer and wine and allowing, say, like English ales to have their beer and wine. If you want a burrito with a beer, it's very different than wanting to have, you know, a pub beer. So having that, that healthy mix, I think, is really contextual overall in, in allowing people to, to serve beer and wine as long as it's well regulated, like with, right. you I'm know. I'm concerned about the existing restaurants and yeah. businesses down there. I'm talking about more of the retail space being converted from retail to yes. restaurant. Yes, understood, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, but I'd like to make a motion to approve. <laughs> I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Probably should do a roll call vote then. Commissioner Esty? Aye. Commissioner Jensen? Aye. Commissioner Wilk? Aye. Vice Chair Christensen? Aye. And Chair Westman? Aye. Okay. We'll move on to our next item, uh, which is item B under the public hearings, and it's uh, 4400 Jade Street. It's the Capitola Community Center. Uh, it's a design permit to remodel the Capitola Community Center at Jade Street Park, located within the Park and Open Space Zoning District. And I believe we have our public works director here. Thank you. as well um, so Sean's gonna give the presentation tonight and then we also have um, Jessica Khan our public work structures here if questions come up and the architectural team is here and they're actually going to give the full overview of the project so Sean will introduce it and then hand it off okay thank you thank you and good evening, good evening uh, planning commissioners so as Katie said, we do have with us Kate Reen, Ryan, excuse me, and Jackie Lowe of Boone Lowe Ratliff Architects, who were the uh, project architects, as well as the public works director, Jessica Kahn. Um, this is a minor design permit for the renovation of the Capitol Community Center. It is located at the Jade Street Park, and this is located in the Parks and Open Space Zoning District. The larger site also includes the Opal Cliffs Elementary School the east there. This is how the community center looks today, front and rear elevations. Uh, so the exterior modifications to the structure are what triggers the minor design permit and design review. This uh, type of permit, minor design permits, typically only require administrative review and approval. However, owing to the public nature of the project, the Community Development Director has deferred this uh, final review and approval to the Planning Commission. Uh, so this project is largely uh, initiated by the renewal of the long-term lease with the underlying school ownership. And it also requires within that long-term use agreement to affect these improvements within the next four years. Um, I want to also clarify that this project does not include the scope of work for the universally accessible playground project, which is separate. So as mentioned, 
this is a, uh, or not yet mentioned, a two-phase construction project. Funding has been allocated for phase A, which in the report is referred to as the primary improvements. Those improvements include the structural repairs, ADA upgrades to the pathways and facilities, as well as most improvements to the structure's exterior. These are a few renderings of the proposed design. One of the, bless you, a couple of the improvements that are not included in phase A, but in the phase B of the ancillary upgrades are the standing seam entryway uh, that has that butterfly reverse pitch and replacement of windows and doors. So these, uh, the other improvements that are listed under ancillary or, or phase B are subject to the city securing additional funding. Some of these uh, improvements also include the external patio improvements. Okay. This is a uh, overview of the entire site and I just want to go through some of the standards that were listed in the report. There aren't many for this zone and they're focused on the utility brought uh, to the community in terms of recreational, scenic, or environmental resources. So this project is a natural fit within this zoning district as it just uh, furthers the ability for and viability of this center to continue to provide public uh, recreation opportunities as well as expanding access on the site through the ADA improvements to the pathways and the inside of the facility. Um, it's also consistent with all applicable design review criteria, which are listed in detail and entirety in the staff report. So, staff is recommending approval on this project. And as part of that approval, we are recommending an extended approval duration of five years. And that is to help the city secure additional funding. Uh, we need a, a shovel ready project for some of the grants that this project may be eligible for. So that'll help us uh, expand that time frame. And with that, I'm going to hand over the presentation to, I believe, Kate Ryan first and Jackie Lowe. Uh, my name's Jackie Lowe. I'm principal architect in the firm Boone Lowe Ratliff Architects, and this is Kate Ryan, associate architect. Um, we are a local women-owned firm in, with an office in Santa Cruz. Um, this, the building has been used extensively by the community since the 1980s. It is in much need of exterior repairs and system upgrades to continue to function as a community asset and resource. Um, while renovating the building, there's ample opportunity to improve the energy performance. Our goal is to make this community center renovation a successful and love space for the next 50 years. Um, I'm gonna kind of go over some of the building exterior improvements. Um, after 40 years of use, it's the exterior envelope is in need of significant replacement and repairs. The original wood siding is significantly damaged and will be replaced with a new durable fiber cement siding. The exterior windows and doors will be replaced with thermally broken aluminum windows and with much improved glass performance. Um, there are current flat roof sections that house the mechanical units, and they will re be replaced. Um, the mechanical units will be replaced, and the roof underneath will be replaced with kind of a single ply membrane cool roof. Um, these exterior upgrades, plus replacing the heating systems, will give um, gives us the opportunity to pr improve the overall performance, leading to a more building comfort and less energy use. Um, let's see, the next slide. Oh, actually you can go back. Um, let's see. We, we also added like a reverse shed roof over the entry, um, marking the entrance and modernizing, modernizing it. And along with new landscaping, this will look 
and feel more welcoming and provide an attractive sheltered space for people to wade in and walk through. Um, you can see that on the upper elevation on the top. It's just, it also has a little bit of green at the front entry. Um, so about, there's some structural assessment and repairs. Um, by removing the heavy concrete tiles, um, which are existing, we have an opportunity to put on a new standing seam metal roof with a 40-year warranty. We will also be adding improved insulation below the metal roof. Um, taking off the weight of the heavy concrete tile roof substantially improves the lateral performance of the building, which provides bracing from the wind and earthquakes. Another benefit of the standing seam roof would allow the city in the future to add solar photovoltaic panels easily with clamps. Um, let's see. At the visible exposed roof, numerous beams that were left um, open and uncovered are, are now dry rotted and in need of replacement. Um, a new roof will now mostly cover the replacement beams and prevent the, the rot in the future. And the end of the new beams can be covered with metal caps. Uh, several of the concrete piers and stucco walls will also be repaired in kind. Hi, thank you. Um, so I'm here to talk about the concept a little bit. Um, so the concept, um, this is, uh, illustrates, it, it was inspired by Capitola Wharf and the transition from the sea to the bluffs. So each interior and exterior space has a very subtly different character that transitions across the building from east to west. So at the east end of the building, which is on the right of the slide, um, this is where we have the meeting room A, and it's a more calm and meditative area with cool colors and wood tones, which are inspired by the ocean. And this area is used more for quieter activities, art, meditation. Um, in the center of the building and in the exterior areas from the entry across to meeting room um, B, this is a more active zone, um, and uh, it's used we're going to use greens and mixed wood, wood tones, and it's inspired by the concept of the wharf or the beach and movement. And then if you go across to the left side, um, this is the west end of the building, and it's at meeting room C. And this is a warm community space, and it breaks out into the park. And it connects off to the playground. It's got sandy colors and warm wood accents inspired by the beach and the bluffs. This concept um, we've carried through to the exterior colors and the landscaping. Um, there's an opportunity to update the exterior colors of the building to create a more contemporary and welcoming look. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> um, again, the finishes and appearance are inspired by the visual language of the wharf. So we're proposing a warm, light gray siding on the body of the building at the meeting rooms and a warm wood finish siding at the front section and the entry. There are color highlights at each of the meeting room patios, which would coordinate with the interior colors. And the exterior beams and rafters would have a wood finish with exposed concrete columns to pick up on the architectural language of the wolf piers. The exterior hardware, including the beam saddles, has been kept exposed as it was in the original design and as it is on the wharf. Um, so I'm, uh, unfortunately, the landscape architect couldn't be here today, so she's given me some notes so I can talk, talk it through the her slides. So. Um, so this is the landscaping plan. Um, all the spaces, exterior spaces we're looking at share the same concerns. They do not meet current accessibility code. The materials are outdated and deteriorating, and the programmatic needs aren't being met to their fullest potential. The proposed concept plan addresses these concerns, drawing design inspiration from the local bluff speech and wharf, which is reflected in the site forms and the materials. The remodel offers a much needed opportunity to make accessibility upgrades and improvements to the community center, making it even more inclusive and a barrier-free space. At the exterior, these include accessible parking and path of travel improvements to meet current code, new ADA compliance signage, and improvements to the building entries and thresholds. So at the entry, which is at the top of the building on this plan, um, the new shed roof will be along with new monument sign incorporating reclaimed wolf wood, decorative paving, upgraded and additional bike parking, new retaining walls which are lower than existing to open up the entry experience, 
additional seating incorporating wood and boulders, the removal of four liquid amber trees, which are currently causing a concern regarding underground root damage and tripping hazards. They'll be replaced at a two to one ratio. And in the front lawn, there's an opportunity for public art. The quiet patio, so this is on the right, the C end. Um, this is uh, at Meeting Room A. This will include an enlarged and upgraded decorative paving area to make it more accessible, small group use. The preservation of the existing magnolia tree, added planting to screen noise and views from the adjacent car park, and a natural stone water feature. The training patio, which is the one at the bottom, which is the concept of wharf, beach, activity and movement. Um, this is heavily used for the Junior Lifeguards training program and will include an upgraded decorative paving and a back wall be opened up to concrete terrace seating with wood top benches to accommodate a better opportunity for instruction. And the main patio, which is on the left, this is the concept of luffs and community and connection. Uh, and it opens up onto the park. This will include an enlarged area to accommodate larger gatherings, upgraded decorative paving, retaining wall with layering and conceptual fossils embedded within it, additional built-in seating opportunities. And if you see in the top left corner of it, there's an accessible stage with flexibility to orient either in towards the patio or out towards the grass, depending on the size of the crowd and the occasion. Thank you very much. a very nice presentation <laughs> yeah I have a question about uh, energy um, consumption so in the year you're gonna replace the whatever system we have now for heating presumably with heat pumps so um, in 20 30 years when heat waves are more common we can reverse them and cool the building as well yeah there is a it is a heat pump system right that's providing cooling yeah and you're not going to try to get some sort of grant to put solar on that. I mean, the south edge. So oh, we would, we would love to. <laughs> yeah. there, but I think, I think it's a budget. There have to be some grants we can go after to yeah. you know, populate that thing with solar, right? And turn your meter back. Yeah. The city, we will be going after some grants, and that's a great recommendation. And we could look at how that fits within the. The, um, the roof is perfect for it. It's got this huge south facing. Um, if we uh, with with the new roofing, we could just literally clip the panels on at any time. It's it's asking for it. <laughs> Even if you don't, are you going to put in a uh, conduit, etc.? So their we vision can, for conduits, they can add it. We can have it solar ready. We're also um, let's see, increasing the amps on the building. It's very very low for a community center, so that's that's one of the big ticket items is to go 300 amps or 400. I think 400, yeah. So that'll help with the solar. I guess I have none of the architects. Thank you. Thank you. Can I have a question of staff before we go to... So I don't have a question of the architects, but I just uh, I'm a little still confused on the process. So has this gone to the city council? Obviously, they approved the budget. Did they have they seen these plans, or will they see these plans? How does the city council get involved in this up till now, and then in the future? So the city council has seen the plans. I'm not sure if have they seen the latest plans, Jessica. Not, not quite yet. So we'll go to um, the city council to see the, the latest plans along with the budget request. But they, they've initiated the project. There was a study done of uh, what the facility needs are. That was the first step. And then they budgeted for us to hire an architectural firm to look at the, um, to start working on the project. So at this point, if we get an approval by the Planning Commission, this is really an essential step for us to start applying for grant funds. Um, but it will also, in terms of budgeting, go back to City Council for project approval and budget. And as Sean stated, that's one of the reasons why we're asking for a five-year approval. We know we have four years um, to be in comp compliance with our contract with the school, but. Um, just going after contract money, they typically want it to be shovel ready. 
So that means getting your approval from your planning commission. So would this, when you go after the grants, would you, would you take the city, this the city council before that or after you apply for grants and then you get some and then you make a presentation and go to the city council? You know, I'm going to lean on our public works director of when she plans to take this next to city council. Well, good evening, Chair and Commissioners. Jessica Kahn, Public Works Director. So with all of our capital projects, uh, particularly ones for facilities, we bring it to the Council at different stages. This one came in at interim stage. I believe we gave an update at the same time we gave an update with the playground project since they are separate projects but interconnected uh, earlier this summer. Uh, they knew it was going to Planning Commission. We were directed to look for additional funding because we do have funding for part of the project, really the essential parts that are um, mandated to us by our lease agreement, but not all of the extra bells and whistles and really what to the public would show a finished, completed project. Um, so to answer your question, Commissioner Wilk, about when this is going back to council, it would likely be after we either know that we're going to get some funding or it's getting to the point where we do need to do, get the project started to meet our four year requirement by our lease. So it just, at this point, it just depends on when we know that we're fully funded. Do you, excuse me, do you have an estimate of what this is going to be, the full project? So we recently just had another cost estimate done that I've yet to review. I think it like came in maybe last week. So um, I know that we are not fully funded for this project. I would say at this point we are about halfway funded for this project, which would cover what we are required to do per our lease agreement. Yeah, as Commissioner Wilk will remember when we were on the back financial advisory committee many years ago that we were trying to get money for the roof and I but you're doing a heck of a lot more than just the roof so mm -hmm. it's gonna be tough <laughs> okay thank you so I, more to discuss <laughs> um, I had a couple questions um I just I'm clear so the um, our technician is having a hard time hearing commissioner or chair Westman so thank you all right sorry I'm um, a couple of points of clarification so uh, the school district agreement with the city is that if there's some improvements have to be done in the four-year period right um, whichever those are and then but you guys are asking for a five-year approval on the de design concept of what the building can look like. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And then another thing was, um, if you know if projects go, if there has to be a scope change or something like that, is there any part of the project that would be brought <clears throat> back to us if there's a big deviation from this, from a budget constraint, or are we approving the project and then if PISA aren't funded, that those will just be peeled off and that, that this approval is overall scope and then if, if things are peeled off will be heard about it through like a director's report or something yes yeah, so um tonight there should be a clear understanding that there's kind of two levels and you should definitely expect the, the necessary changes to take place within this approval um, and then the ancillary items we are hopeful that those will be included but there is a chance that when this project is final those are not included I will keep you updated throughout the process if um, all of a sudden we got a lot of money and we decided to add a second floor that would definitely come back we'd look at our at our code at what needs to come back to the Planning Commission and always with public projects if there's a, a change happening like tonight I'm going to give you an update on the wharf um, I will bring it back to the Planning Commission so you're in the loop and this one last thing is just for um I guess more of a point of clarification for the community um, just to highlight so the community center is a project that's just so I was connected with uh, a co project now with the uh, playground project and so like when um, and so there's a, a fundraising group going on right now to raise money for the playground which is completely separate and then the Don Addis who just gave uh, some funding which is a million dollars that is not connected to the playground at all so that's just for the potential improvements at the community center is that correct that is correct okay I just think it helps you know um, the fundraising that they're doing I know it's sometimes a little bit of conflict but 
they're raising some money, and you know, you hear that there's a million dollar grant, and everybody thinks those are two projects together. And I just wanted to try to make sure that was very clear for anybody. Yeah, so both the projects are two separate projects, and the money that came in from Don Addis, the million dollars is for, is will be spent towards the community center. Thank you. Okay. So, if there are no other comments on this project. We need a motion and a second to approve the design permit. I'll move that we approve this design permit. I'll second. I think it, we have a motion and second. Can we do a roll call vote? Commissioner Estee? Aye. Commissioner Jensen? Aye. Commissioner Wilk? Aye. Vice Chair Christensen? Aye. And Chair Westman? Aye. Yeah, I think this is going to be a great asset to our community. Yes. This center is certainly needed be updated for a long time and it's nice there are funds to do the main things that need to be done okay we'll move on to our director's report okay um i have a number of updates for you tonight first i just want to say happy holidays and thank you for your service this year um you guys put in a lot of time and effort and it's greatly appreciated so thank you um, our next meeting is going to be on January 18th. It'll be the third Wednesday of the month. During that meeting, we'll be um, changing seats. We'll uh, be appointing our chair and our vice chair. Typically, our vice chair moves up to chair, and then the vice chair position will be open. So I just want to start the brainstorming there for you all. Um, and next update is an update on our housing element. Um, I, Veronica Tam, did reach out to our uh, person at the state. They've not given us a, uh, any concrete feedback or even any clues at this point. So um, at the last time we were reviewed by them, we had three outstanding comments, all of which we think we addressed at the city council adoption. We also received that letter from Malone Geyer. Um, with concerns about our housing element and then a follow up letter saying we don't want to get them in, in the way of the housing element, but we're looking forward to working with the city in the future. So um, we'll see how it goes. And I'm, I know I'm just waiting to hear some good news there, but I've got no indication for you at this point. Worst case, so, so the timeline is um, December 15th is when it's due and it should be certified. If it's not certified, then we're, we're exposed to builder's remedy. Um, because we submitted it on November 14th, January 14th is the date that they have to provide us comments by. So we're hopeful, originally our reviewer said that his goal was to have it to us by December 15th, um, but we haven't had an update since he said that. So, um, so that's the update on the housing element. I'm sorry, there's not more news there. Um, the other news I have for you is our mall redevelopment study. We're doing a land use study on the mall to see um, what different techniques are out there in terms of land use for us to assist in uh, initiating mall redevelopment. Um, that's under underway right now. Cosmont is working on that. They're a land use and economic development group. Um, so they've we've I've spent meetings with them going over our existing code and what. Um, what we have in place today, and they're doing their research on what other cities have done. And um, I expect that report um, to probably be finalized by the beginning of February. So in January, we'll have some meetings with a technical group, and then hopefully a final report by February so we can start working on implementation. A um, couple other items. Um, you know, from the storms last year, we, there's one remaining um, facility that hasn't opened yet, the Bay Bar. I reached out to Chuck Hammers today, who owns the building, and what he's hearing from the tenant is that they plan to be open in the next couple weeks. Um, in terms of a building review, we haven't had a request for an inspection yet, but that, I thought that was great news. Um, also, in speaking with Chuck Hammers, they're going to be putting together They've been working on some sign packages, it sounds like. Um, they've had their banners up for some time. So um, he'll be working more closely with staff, but I, I, when, when I reached out to him, um, we're hoping to see some applications come in there so that we can take down the banners and look open as we are. 
Um, and then in February, or, or maybe at the late January meeting, um, I plan on bringing forward, I'd like to do this once we have our certified housing element, um, a plan for how we plan to implement all of the deliverables. I think counting them individually, there's 78 deliverables in our housing element. A lot of them overlap. I think we've got five deliverables regarding community meetings and working with develop interested developers. So I think the number is going to be somewhere about 30 projects or less. But um, so I'll bring forward a proposal to you of how I plan to get that done in the next three, because how we plan to get this completed in the next um, three years is when all of those, you have to implement your housing elements. So um, with that, I do have an update for you tonight. I have some slides on the wharf. Um, and it, the last you saw this was in May. We had an update on the wharf and looking at the bathroom specifically. Just on, on the housing element. Yes. Um, Finance group consider putting aside some money to get consultants to help you out on the implementation side. Do we have any money at all? That, I mean, so the three of you aren't completely overloaded. You know, we do have money. Um, we have a general plan fund that every time someone applies for a building a permit, they they pay into our general plan fund. So we do have money there, so we can um, hire consultants to help with that work. So. We also have a housing trust fund that for affordable housing projects, some of that can be used too for admin. So, okay, so I've got a lot of pretty pictures for you tonight on the wharf enhancement. So um, I think you're all aware of the Cap CWEP, which is Capitola Wharf Enhancement Project. And this is a um, volunteer group that got together to raise money and to, I think it's been explained as put the jewelry on the wharf and really make it beautiful. Um, so, and, and when you last saw the entryway to the wharf, there there was discussion about it's, it might be time to rethink this and dress it up a little bit. So I've got some slides on that. This is the plan view of the updated wharf. It's really challenging to read in terms of um, when you're looking at the plan set under the left-hand side, it says this is what it'll look like when the door is closed and then under the right hand side it's what it'll look like when the gate is open but right now and this is a not not a great rendering because it looks like there's two gates so there's not two gates it's going uh, the existing wharf the door swings open under the updated rendering the door will slide so next slide please and this is showing a wing wall um, that there's two wing walls that will connect to the wharf entryway. The um, wing wall on the left, which is, uh, will be a shorter wing wall in which the, uh, the recognitions of participants and um, such as like the city of Capitola and the Monterey Bay um, Sanctuary and other uh, funding sources will be noted on this wall. And then on the other side of the wall, which you'll be able to see in the next rendering, if you want to pull up the next rendering. I think that's going to be for uh, a, a donor wall on the right. So um, so here you're seeing a rendering, and it does look like there's two gates. And I confirmed tonight that the rendering also needs to be fixed because it's really just one gate that slides over. Um, so this is looking onto the wharf. Something to note is that on the columns, they weren't done with the rendering yet. This came in late this afternoon. They plan to do some beautiful tile work. It's mosaic tiles on the bottom. Um, I have some pictures of, of examples of previous tile work that the artist has done. And then um, yeah, we can go to the next slide. The, at the top of the columns is um, is a lighting mechanism also the the white caps you're seeing there that's one item at the very end of my slideshow um as i when we were updating our zoning code we got feedback from the um, coastal commission about having special uh, lighting provisions over natural areas i don't think what's being proposed complies with our codes so that's something that we will be bringing back to the group um, i do think there's a way to make this absolutely beautiful with down-directed lights that 
really uh, light up the columns rather than lighting on top that uh, doesn't comply with night sky. And the ordinance is really clear about lighting over um, the Monterey Bay Sanctuary. So I don't think as designed that that would fly. But next slide, please. Um, and then this is a, one of the better views where you can really see what's happening. So two, the two walls, the entryway, um, the archway, it's just, it's what's existing today, but it's extended because the width is longer. Um, and then you can see those bathrooms there. And with the gate sliding across, it um, almost um, helps screen the bathrooms during the day when that's open. So next slide. There's new light poles that are um, proposed within this design. I think the originals were gooseneck, and this is the updated design for the light poles. Next slide. And these are just images. So, and also Jerry has, uh, Commissioner Jensen has been involved with CWEB, and if there's anything you wanna add, that, please feel free. <laughs> so these, this is the bench design, which you see regularly throughout Capitola, next. Um, 88 tables, so picnic tables, next slide. Trash receptacles, next slide. Uh, great binocular viewing stations, so I'm, I believe these will be um, attached to the railings, is that correct? Or, or to the deck, okay. And next slide. Um, there'll be bronze sea life throughout, uh, I think, and I, um, that will be attached, I believe, to the walls um, along, or the railings along the wharf. So. Oh, in the deck, okay. Next slide. And then here's some of the mosaic tile work that, um, from the artist that will be installing the mosaic tile work. And that mosaic tile work, I believe, will be on either side of the entry. Next slide. And then this is the special um, lighting requirement that I just wanted to bring up that lighting is that number two lighting over natural areas is prohibited past the minimum amount that might, might be necessary for public safety purposes, except when temporary in conjunction with a temporary event. So um, I wanted to bring that up early because I don't want this to get too far down the road without uh, acknowledging this. It is something that when we updated our code, um, the Coastal Commission wanted us to keep in when we did our revisions. So it's one that it would probably have to come before you. And I don't think it's something on the list of what we can typically give variances out for. So, um, but with that, um, maybe we can go back to a rendering. And this does not qualify for a project that would need to come back to Planning Commission. But I know you wanted to see the um, does it go before Final council? Results. It will go. So next Thursday. So next week it's going to go to um, the art committee as well for an update. But because this is a um, privately funded project and not city funds for the, the artists, you'll, I think, art and culture will be looking at this, but they really have no, because it's not city funds, then it's not a city project that is actually approved by that group. But the city council ultimately um, has the final say in funding purposes and then the final approval on this project. So if there are any concerns, I'm happy to bring those forward. Um, I mean, is there, any, is there any say in terms of you know, the visual of how things look and feel is like, does city council weigh in on that or art and cultural weigh on, in on so, that? Um, sure. Like this is, it's still, it's a city project, it's but a, there's yeah, it's um, more funding that's come in through a private group. So it's not, if, if there is feedback on the design, it, it's more than welcome. And that's why we're here tonight. I'm sorry that this isn't a formal item on your review. Uh, they're act, they're, but it, I'm bringing it forward as an update as it, it's kind of going, um, it'll be in the city council packet for Thursday night. So I do think it's also appropriate to, if you'd like me to forward any comments to them, I'd be happy to, um, or if you have any feedback tonight. But no, no official decision by planning commission, so. So the lights that are going the length of the wharf, is the intent to leave them on all night? Anybody know? 
it's good, you know. And is it when it's a gate open and closed? What are the operationally? How's this working? This is my question. Sure. So the operation of the lighting would be the same as it was prior to the wharf being closed. So yes, there would be some lighting on all night on down the wharf. As far as the gate being closed, the only time we ever really closed that, um, there was another gate on the wharf mid span that is closed in front of the businesses and that gets closed every night. But this one remains open unless we're closing the wharf. And typically that's only if there's a really big storm or some other kind of thing where for safety purposes, we close it. Typically it would be in this state where the gate is open. So we're allowed to light up the ocean like that? I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just asking. It seems... With the lights down. Yeah, those the, lights, the large lights that are going all the way down, presumably all the way to the end of the wharf, right? You're going to be... The seals are going to be seeing those. Right? It's my understanding as long as it's downlit, correct? So typically our lighting has to be downlit. In this area, you're allowed to have enough lighting for public safety. Um, so I do think that would meet that standard of keeping a public, um, the public wharf lit for public safety. Uh, I don't know. It just looks like you're going to overlight the ocean. Some environmental folks are going to not agree with that. I suspect. I don't know. I don't have an opinion. I'm just pointing it out. And I'm not familiar if we're, um, we can look into whether or not our the existing lights that were at the wharf, if, if we're proposing the same number of lights. Yes. We replace one for one. Look, a one for one. So it, it is the like same lighting. One, but I don't know if the rules change because it all goes all over again. So, you know, right. keep the seals happy. Yeah, it's a question of lumens at that point. Hmm. I had a right out there. quick question just about process. If, if, if mm -hmm. just, and I'm sorry if this is redundant, but if understood that it's private funding is it a uh is it a recognized the CWEP a recognized entity in the wharf process and when you go to ha, having it not be a publicly noticed review i mean the public isn't going to say anything on the look and design of their wharf is that a thing so the the majority of the wharf updates have been reviewed and were permitted and um, the amendments to the wharf were reviewed and permitted at the May meeting for the bathrooms um, and that time we looked at the entry um, it's not a requirement under design permit there's not it doesn't meet a qualification like tonight I brought forward the um, the update to uh, on, on the Jade Street, yeah. Be, but it wasn't required. So um, because of the timing of this and because it is currently under construction, that's why we're where we are. But if you have concerns on the design, I'm happy to take those comments. And I'm just curious, but yeah, it's it seems not like a big change for the face of the city and to not have it be publicly reviewed. It just seemed kind of, it seemed like it would be more of a concern for the city? I don't know. But anyway, I just, just the, it just seemed strange that it wasn't. Helpful, <coughs> excuse me, is that the entry of the wharf, that's not any part of CWEP, mm -hmm. that's all the city. Okay. So the improvement, what CWEP did was raise funds for benches, mm -hmm. um, which are the same ones that were in the approved set of plans. So from the same manufacturer, so benches, garbage cans, and the tables were from the same uh, manufacturer. Mm -hmm. um, the light uh, standard was um, extensive research was done and was sent into the city for review from Moffat and Nickel for have them to have improvement uh, yeah, input on that. Yeah. The um, viewing stations are the same ones that are put over at the Monterey Bay Aquarium, mm -hmm. and they just purchased, I think, 23 of them. They did like a six month study. So we put that through as a recommendation to the city. And then the artistic features. Um, there's two artists that are going to be used that are locally known. Um, Kathleen Corsetti is one of them, and the other one is um, Sean Mulligan, and who who is going to do the bronze thing. But the entrance to the um, wharf um, was not privately funded at all, or the design, or we didn't do any design work around that. So. Okay, so that part is city. I just was confused about the whole how it was interlacing. So I. Um, I 
I received the plans t this afternoon right, for the meeting, <laughs> yes. so I'll get some clarity. Is it something that would the Planning Commission, if there's the opportunity, would you like this to come back? I would love to see all the pictures. <laughs> like, I mean, just a personal opinion. Is, is there any? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with the City Council making this decision rather than it coming back to the Planning Commission because it is going to be, you know, at a council meeting and be shown and the public will have time to comment. Uh, I, th I think there is more citizen interest in the council meetings and more people participate at that. So I would be happy with that. Yeah, I would agree. As long as there's some public review of yeah. what's going to be public property, I think that's yeah. probably a good idea. <laughs> yeah. I think that was my main reason. Okay. Yeah, so the, the, there will be that opportunity at City Council next week. welcome so that that concludes my director's report this evening okay Commission communication uh, I, I had one question I noticed that all, a number of the trees along Park Avenue have all been tagged have a little silver tag on them some of them have tag and blue ribbon and I was just wondering what's going on with all of those trees <laughs> so there's two projects going on out there one is the rail trail so they did an extensive um survey and they were tagging trees out there to kind of see how their different layouts affect their final uh, final layout which i believe the eir is still out there for comment right now the other project is a pg e project where they're looking to kind of trim down some of the canopy for their lines out there so i don't think they put in a permit for any of that work as the, to my knowledge, but I do know that they're out there evaluating it. Yeah, I just noticed that a lot of trees had been tagged. I mean, probably 30, 40 trees at least. And so I just wanted to find out, you know, there wasn't a plan to suddenly remove those trees or are those trees gonna be saved? You know, what was going on? So I assume when something's going to happen to the trees, it, w it would come back to us because some of them are significantly large trees. Yes, those tree removals would come back to you. Um, I'll get an update to you from Rob Tidmore on okay. exactly what they're looking at for the EIR, and I'll send you an email update. Okay. Sounds great. Project planner. Thank you. Anything else? If not, we will adjourn. I hope everyone has a wonderful holiday season, and I look forward to seeing you all next year. Thank you. Thank you.